Okay, so this is um, tutorial four, tutorial five, uh, polyfill. Um, so let's just jump straight into this. The biggest problem has been that, um, well, for one, I make some apologies uh, about some sanity that I must have been going through when doing the first part. Now, I'm going to open up another terminal just for the sake of opening up another terminal. I've got many on the screen, as you can see there. Uh, let's see if I can actually find one that's already set up for this. That one would be a good one to show. So let's open up that one. And let's open up the other one as well. It looks the same. Right, so we've got these two. They look the same. They agree. They look the same, which is fine, which is not really what we want as such. Um, I'm going to go to php.ne and we're going to make some changes. Well, no, we're not going to make any changes actually, that's not what we're going to do. I've already made them, I'm just going to show you that you can make some changes. Um, to two things in fact, it's not php.ne that just needs to be done. So if I do less, P I'm, I'm only doing less, you can do vim if you want. You have to install vim of course. Um, so this one isn't really the best, is it? To to show because the colors don't come up. So, okay, so then PHP. And you'll probably see I need sudo to do anything. So it's read only just now, which is fine. Okay, so you want to go down and you want to start adding some things that will allow you to do some of the big data type stuff because we don't have access to the big data stuff. It's you know, you were not going to get that in many places, so I mean, I tend to complain about such things, but it's not often you'll get it. If you're a big place, you'll get it. If you're not, then fine. So I put the maximum execution time up to a ridiculous amount. I left a comment to see what I had, but I put it to a, rid a ridiculous amount, and I like that. <laughs> so do that. There's no need to, I mean, this is just a not to worry about, it. it's just a distribution. I would say crank up your uh, a local debug sort of. Um, distribution that we're using it for so nobody's going to access it hopefully on your end uh, memory limit i stuck it up to quite high uh, it's not that high i know but you know it's high in terms of a vm uh, where you've got only so many gigs worth uh, available so remember and crank up your vm's uh, main memory limit the actual vm's main memory limit you can do that using settings and virtual box so we keep going down till we find something else that we change. Uh, post max size. So post max size is I put it up to three gigs because of the size of the files that we've got. Even though we don't need this anymore, uh, just to let you know, but I, I put that in. Uh, upload max file size. We need that three gigs. Well, technically we need that. We don't really. We're gonna. Keep a note of this, you can see on the right hand side that we're actually in there. And in fact, if, uh, if I were to do an LS on, on the right hand side here, you would see we've got Tripfare 12 in there. And I'll show you the reason why for that, because we get a few issues. The default socket timeout, well, I wanted to deal with that because it, it was getting a bit of a pain to do anything. Um, so I stuck that to some unbelievable amount. Uh, again, I would just put in up to an unbelievable amount. If I were you. Again, similar with cache size, I just cranked it up. I think we're actually almost done. There may be a couple of little things that need to change. Oh, my scale cache size, I cranked it up. Uh, yeah, I cranked it up too, yeah. Even though it isn't needed uh, in there at all, I just cranked it up. Um, okay. Oh, Postgres, interesting. So you could have made the configurations properly, unlike me, but uh, I just wanted to get it done fast. So there's no calculations being made or anything. I'm just getting it done and letting you know that I'm getting it done super quick so you guys can just get on with doing some work. Uh, I don't think I've changed this, but you know, you could, 
I don't think I changed that at all. It's for soap. Uh, but you know, you could check that and see if you want to, to do something with it. I don't think we need any of that at the bottom. Certainly not to do with soap. So anyway, I need to just quit, don't I? Yes. Now the next thing I changed was the my the configuration file. So we go in here. I have to put the key buffer up to 32, uh, the max allowed packet, I put up to 5. Uh, change this to 2048, that's the short buffer size. And I've done the same, put this to 32, then 2048, 2048, and 32 megs. These were almost arbitrary. I just decided to start cranking things up. Uh, just, um, like I said, I did no calculations. I've done lots of calculations on real databases, but this is not what I need here. I just need it to work, and you need it to work. So the NODB buffer pool size is one. You get errors for that if you don't start doing things like this. So I crank that up. You can check whether I've done anything with these things, but I think the only one I have is the NODB lock weight timeout. I've just made that insane so that there's plenty of time for it running. Uh, and also the max, uh, the max allowed packet size is 32 megs. Now you can check the rest of this uh, if, if I've done anything to anything here. I don't think I have. So I haven't, uh, I believe. But you can check that yourself, right? So I'm just going to quit that. And that's in my dot c and my dot config file as well. And it's inside op lamp, etc. Okay, so that's the sort of first thing. The next thing on the agenda, as it were, for the polythol component is this thing here. I must have been going mad at the time. So this thing here will allow you to unzip your files in fair data. Now I don't actually have any files left in fair data. I actually went to a whole new extreme with this uh, thing because of the way my VM set up in terms of hard disk space, I can't change it. So there's actually nothing in here. But if you remember that there were many zip files in here and I was having issues opening them, well this isn't really that hard. Uh, and I must have been going crazy. Why not use the VM? Why not use the VM is the way to think about it, right? So what I do is you go to file, uh, not, not file, sorry, you open a new terminal, and you would go to wherever it happens to be. So if I did this, the desktop, uh, where those files happen to be, desktop, and I went into fair data, and then I'm just going to check and see if I can find that command. There it is. So there's a command. So if I put jar xf trip fair uh, one, .cv.zip, it unzips that massive file using the Java virtual machine. Fantastic, it works first time, life is great. And if you do that for all of those, that's brilliant. And then just, uh, yeah, you should have all the files left in there. You might have an issue with space, so, I mean, I've had, the reason they're not there, and there's only one left inside, uh, there's only one left inside here, inside the temp files, because space was running out on a machine, and it might run out on yours as well. So just to let you know, once one is done, I usually delete it. So that's the first place to do. Now, if you are having a few problems with things like that, um, I'm going to go all the way down not to home. I'm going to go even further down, right to the base. And this command here, I'm going to see if that's already in there. Yeah, this command here is really useful. Oops. So, so check all paths to see what's got the most data in it. It probably should say that LAMP has the biggest data, or the largest data in it. Mm, it usually works a bit better than this. Oh, there we go. You can hear the machine is uh, going a bit nuts. So you can see here that the highest, so it goes all the way down to the highest. You can see here that it goes through my entire LAMP server, and pretty much all of that is the, the largest by far. Except this one. Weird, I wonder what's in there. Um, and also in temp, Temp's got um, a one point something gig file in Tripfair. But you can see it's virtually all the LAMP servers. Now I had them all in one, but that's not how I want it to happen anymore. So there's also some changes to make. There's also some major changes to make. Now, to everything, there are major changes to make to everything. Um, Right, so that's when, when I deal with that, then let's start with uh, something else. Let's start with something else. Okay, so when I go, let's, let's go to weather data. 
because we're, we're not, uh, remember that you've got your not normal database set out, which is just this original one. This original one has got fair data, it's got nothing in it. But let's have a look at the changes that I've made. Let's go to the structure. The structure, I don't know why I was thinking, so I, I think I mentioned this before, but you can see here that there are possibly some, is this the original? Oh yeah, these are all still decimals, but that doesn't really matter because the only thing we really need is the, the pickup date time. It really doesn't make any difference to us at the moment uh, about the, the values of these things. So that's why that's the case. But you notice that the ID is no longer at the start, it's at the end. And it's the primary key and it's auto increment. And that's great. That's what we want to, to happen. And at this point, when you've got this set out, then you want to import your CSV file. In fact, I wouldn't even do it this way. I would do something else. I would do this. Then, I would I even do it here? Yes, I would do it here. Okay, let's do it here. So the things that we have to do, in fact, are this. And this will work in real time. Oops. Now the other method will work for weather data, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So load data local in file if you've got one inside there. But now notice this. What you need to do is you need to copy from fair data. So if I did a little control R here, you can see the last thing I did with a CP in it was copy across uh, trip fair data from desktop fair data 2013 to here, inside here. That's the last thing I did, into here. And then what you do when you're inside there is you have to make it, um, well, you don't have to make it a 777, but I just do for ease. You just make everything with trip fair uh, a 777 and that means it's accessible from within temp so it's opt lamp temp so and then you change it to the one that you'd like to insert so in this case it doesn't matter because I'm only showing you basically what's going on but let's just walk through what's happening so you want to put it into the table fair data you've got the fields terminated by uh, commas and that makes sense because it's a CSV file but they're enclosed by this uh, symbol here and escaped by this symbol here and lines are terminated by the end terminated symbol here. Um, and you ignore the first line because that's got the names of all these things in it. And you'll notice that that's got the name of every single one of these columns. That one, 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 and that one. But not this one. And that's at the end for a good reason. And once you've got that in there, just go. And it'll work in real time. I don't want to put it on just now because I don't want to put anything in this. This the uh, um, one I want to keep this one fresh, especially for um, yeah. Anyway, so let's just think about this for. Uh, let's go back a minute. So that's how you do that when you want to put things in. That's how you do that. But that's not really what um, I'm saying. We. Well, I just want you to see if you can do it. Sorry, I want to see if you can do this and get that data. And I don't want you to do it for everything unless you really want to. So once I have this empty thing, which I made, I made this empty, yeah, I just want to delete this page. So when I've got this empty thing, this DB row original, what I did was I, I copied this one, and you, you copy it by going to operations, this is, if you want to do this, I copied it by operations, and I copied database 2, so I copied database 2, DB row 1 up here, DB row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But I didn't do that until I'd got the weather data in. Now the weather data has changed as well. not so much okay so we've still got everything is exactly the same except you'll note that we've got a float for rain a float well, I don't think elevation matters but a float for uh, rain we've got our dates fine we've got a float for temperature max and temperature min because we need that and we've got a float for the average wind 
Now, I've not done anything with the average one, but perhaps you could do something with the average one if you want to try this experiment. If you don't, just think about how you would do it. That's all I want you to do is just think about it. Or maybe just do it for one piece of data. You know, make one month, all right? So what did I do then? Well, once I've got that data in, uh, well, I import exactly the same way. So, I, I, but, you know, I didn't have to worry about this one, did I? I mean, I really didn't have to worry about it. I could have just browse. Uh, and then, so you just browse the CSV. So for the weather data, you browse the CSV, you find weather data, wherever it is. I think it's th this one is new for me, so it doesn't make any difference, but it's got all the stuff in it. So weather data new, um, dot CSV. I'll, I'll go back and show you weather data new dot CSV. I don't know why that's a big issue, but anyway, weather data new dot CSV. Um, and I can't remember, does weather data new dot CSV have something on the top of it? So let's find out. Ah, see, it doesn't have any of the, the headings, so I don't have to skip it. Uh, I'll put weather data new dot CSV into your into the the folder. Um, and you, so you don't have to skip one. That's fine. Um, and then you've got CSV. You've got all these things are set up like that, except for this columns thing here. And this one is important. So for this columns one, you'll know that you want to put all these in. So you have to write down all of the names of the headers on your in your columns that you're going to use. And you copy them. And you paste them into here, but actually I think that I can just do this. Yeah, and it'll just come straight up. Okay. And that's fine. Now there's one thing I haven't mentioned here, and then you just click go, but 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 I haven't showed you this part. So let's go to fair data. This is the thing that changes it, sorry. This is what weather new is all about. Weather new, uh, sorry, feather data, sorry, feather data, weather new has day ID. Not ID on the end, of course, but day ID. So let me take a step back when I'm, I'm doing this. Just hold on a second. So when we go to weather new, so if I open this using whatever I'm going to use, let's open it with Libra. Let's just open it. Now what I've done is I've taken the weather data and I've gone all the way to the end and I've added an extra thing here. Now I went and got my calendar and I found out what day um, the first of the first 2013 is. It's a Tuesday. So Tuesday's two, Wednesday's three. You get the idea, right? Sunday's seven, Monday's one. And I just copied and pasted them in there. I know you could come up with a way to do it with modulus division and whatever. You could do whatever you want in there, but I just copied and pasted them in because after a while you just copy and paste large amounts of things in all the way to the bottom. And then I double checked when I got to the bottom, is it the right day that it finishes with? And yes, it is Tuesday for the final day of the year, which is the 31st, I think, of December. So, great, let's go back to this again. So when we're doing weather data and we want to import, just like I said a minute ago, now we go to weather data new, which you're gonna get from me as well. Uh, you don't need to skip one because we've got rid of those. Um, CSV, that's all fine. And then in here, you have to use all of the columns that you want to keep. And all the columns that you want to keep are, and if I just press Control V, you can see it's got all of the columns possible in the database right up to the ID, but not including ID. And then you just click Go. And what do I mean by ID? Well, ID is exactly the same, right? So ID is exactly the same as what we had just a minute ago in Fair Data. We add an ID with a primary key, but we just don't add anything into there. It just does it itself on each loop round. So that should be enough information to show you how to do that. But once I did that, once I did that for this DB original, like I said before, I went to operations, then I copied the database, I changed the name to one, and I copy structure and data, and then go. So it's empty for fair data, full for weather data, so it copies all of those across. And then when I've got each one of those, then for the first one here, I would go in, I would click on fair data. You see there's quite a lot. I would click on fair data. It's probably going to take like a minute to get all the data back. Well, it's actually really fast. Must have it in cache. 
and um, import. Uh, no, not even import, sorry, SQL. And then do you remember the thing I said just a little while ago? So we CP, we CP uh, trip fair data one into here and we do chmod777, so it's in there. And then we take the command that I made a minute ago, I showed you a minute ago, which is this one, this local data file with all of the names of the things in your database. You put it in here, except for ID, and then you click go, or once that's one, and then you click go. And then once you finish, you just double check whether it's the right one. You, we add it is just check if that says it's one in the middle there and make sure that everything is in its right place so like when you, you scroll this along it looks like everything is fine everything has got what it, you think it should do so that works out fine right so that's great everybody's happy with that well I'm happy with that and you do that for each one and that means we've got our data in there however we want our data like this. So I created this new database called DB Row Results because you're going to get given the results. So I don't know what we're panicking about. You're going to get given the results. And we basically want to collate our results into a certain format. Mm, I'm going to hold, oh yeah, let's go for that. I'll show you what the certain format is like. Here's what the certain format looks like. What we want is just an ID. We want the day ID so we know what day it is. We want T min, the temperature min, the temperature max, the precipitation, and the number of trips. And you can see the number of trips are the collated amount for that particular day. So this is the first of the first, 2013, and we've counted how many number of trips there were. And we've got the T min, the T max from that day, and so on, we've got the precipitation. And we give it that for 365 days, and that's all we really want back again, is that for 365 days. And you're gonna get given that as well. So if, you, if I forget to give you that, you just tell me, look, you forgot to give me that, Russell, you need to give me that now. Oops, a daisy, what is going on now? <sighs> right, okay. So let's just see where I can find that results thing. I'm sure I made it here. Yeah, final vowels CSV. So. So if you want to make, put that into your database, uh, it's fairly straightforward. You make something that's got ID, day ID, T min, T max, uh, PRCP, num trips. Now you'll notice that the ID is, in, is already there, so you don't need to do what you did before, in the sense that um, when you're creating the structure, if I show you the structure, you'll see that there's no um, auto increment set on this at all. It's just ID, DID, TMIN, TMAX, PRCP, num trips, and then you just import the CSV into there, skip the first one. So you skip the first one. Um, you go to CSV, or well, you don't need to go to CSV. So for example, if I were to do this again, I would go browse, and I would click on final vowels at CSV, it would find it's a CSV, it would decide already it's a CSV, we've skipped one. And you just click go and everything goes into your database and you just double check it. And then once we've got them there, great. We're going to use them there. And the idea is that you have to know how to do that. That's going to be really important that you know how to do this and you know how to understand this. So what I suggest that you're going to do, so if I had a look quickly at the pages for your tutorial. So what we're saying is with the principal components, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We're doing the polyfill for tutorial four, so I've shown you that. And you can see I've got it distributed over 12 weeks. If you wanted to get, ah, yeah, sorry, I've jumped again. If you want to get these results, say you want to try it yourself, the best way to do it is to open up a terminal. Uh, let's open up all terminals that I've got, if I can do that. So this is really useful, this one here. Uh, this one here will show you what I've done. And this one here will show you, not this one. This one here will show you that I get bored. So the command for being able to get that data for each month. So the first thing is you want to go into MySQL. I'm sure you've used MySQL before, especially in the terminal. Okay, so let's just come out here. I don't know if we can come out here yet. So let's come out here. So in an opt lamp bin, you want to get in. It's dot my dot slash MySQL dash u root. Get in. 
and then we want to use a particular database, so let's use DB role one, for example. Yeah. And the command that we use is this command, select weather data ID, so from weather data we get the ID, from weather data we get the ID, from weather data we get T min, from weather data we get T max, from weather data we get the precipitation or the rain, and then we want to count for each one of those uh, things, select count star from fair data where date, pick up date time, so I've, I've cast date to the pick up date time, equals weather data dot date because weather data has a date and the pickup time is a date time so I cast date just in case and I want to call that as num trips from weather data so we get something like this out now this is for db row 12 so I did it first I did it separately for each one and then I simply just put it into um I simply just copied and pasted it into uh Libra and I might show you how to do that as well um, you know, because your thing you're gonna you, your thing you probably won't have as many problems as this, but you know, for this it was gonna be difficult to happen in real time. So once you run this, you wait for a while. If you get bored, you do this. You show processes, and it shows you the process of running. And one of them is gonna be this one. It'll tell you how long it's been running for. It's been running for that's about two hours that one. But you know, early the earlier components uh, of it were only running for a very short speed at pace of time. Um, you know, the ones later, they require, I've had several running at once, like three or four or five or even, you know, I think four at once is the maximum amount. It's going to take longer. But anyway, you get this back again. Then what I did was I just took from here and I copied and pasted all the way down to there for each month. I started with the first month and I opened up Libra. And in fact, I'll just do it for you just now, just to show you how to do it. It's pretty cool, right? Oh, it's not that cool, but... Um, so that's the, oops a daisy, what is going on here, I just don't know what's happening anymore, so I'm not actually doing anything, it's just going nuts. <sighs> See, that's the problem isn't it. Control C. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do because that just aborts it. I should know these things. I just did it like two days ago. So you right click, copy, paste, and then it'll give you some weird option. This weird option is important because it's not really a CSV. Now I've already sorted this out, but you can see here by my settings, if you set your settings to be the same, you can see here I'll put a pipe in because a pipe is what we have in the terminal. If we go back to the terminal, you see these pipes are what's separating, but you can see on the left-hand side, it's blank. So it's actually pretty cool. I mean, it, it leaves a blank thing. It's really easy. You just do this, and then you right-click on that and delete the column content, uh, delete the selected column, and you've got everything. Now, obviously, you would have one at the start here. This is just the last one I took for 12, just to show you that you can put them all together, and I, I put num trips and everything. And on the first one, I just copied and pasted that in, uh, and so that it had the names and stuff in there. And yeah, it worked fine, absolutely fine. So good, you would eventually do that for all of them, and then save. This is for you thinking in the future because you're going to have something to do. This is why I'm telling you. So this is about this is also also tutorial five. This is collating the data. So this is all the data you're going to have. Now, what would I like you to do in tutorial five? What would I like you to do? Well, it's an interesting question. Let's have a look and see because I can't even remember. Okay, so we've got all our data together. You've got your data, which is fine. Sorry. Um, part one, I want you to test getting lots of data into the database using the method. So create 12 separate database instances and just try getting your CSV files into them doesn't matter do it for a couple you don't have to do all of them maybe just one and maybe just one is fine do it for one database and do it for one month so basically your process is unzip uh, trip data one dot csv dot zip move it to temp change it to 777 go to your database thing construct db uh, row one you know with the two tables and the way that i've shown you how to do it here with id at the end obviously and 
um, for weather data, DID added. So you need to go into the weather. Well, I'll give you the weather data one, but you know, in the future, you're going to have to do that yourself, right? And in the near future, you're going to have to do it for yourself. Um, that's regardless, you're going to have to do it for yourself. Uh, so, um, and once you've got that, you know, import all the data. So import the weather data into there, which is fine. Maybe you should do that in the original one and then you can copy lots of them. Get used to that. So make one master DB rule one, get the weather data, then copy that one into DB rule one, once you've got that all in, and then import the big CSV file. So you get your CSV file, you copy it into temp, you turn it to 777, you click on fair data and PHP my admin, then you use the inline, so you use this uh, command. Oh, where's it gone? And then you use what's going on? And you use this one with the correct thing here. So this would be one inside the SQL tab for so for this one you click on that one click on fair data imagine it's empty sql once you've copied over the temp right enough you copy it well you don't copy and paste but you write in that so you write in this so you can pause it now write it in then press go wait for a while maybe four or five minutes something like that maybe a bit longer and then it'll be all be in then once you've done check now that it's right and once you know how to do that, you're going to be in a pretty good place for your tutorial. Now, the start and stop lamp, if you've forgotten, is this. So once you change the CNF and once you add the my.config file and also the php.any file, you need to put, do this one first, then this one second. Okay? And that will allow you to do everything you need to do. Uh, also noted that you really should test you really should test this as well like I said um, before so you need to test this command on each one of your data on the, the database so once you've got it why not just test it it will take a long time it could take anywhere between about 17 minutes and about two hours and do it for the first database so remember what we do here is we so let's go through the process again so say You've done your database rule, you've put your fair data in, you then go, you go to opt lamp bin, then mysql u root, then use, so let's say you've made db rule one, you've got all the data in there, fantastic. And then you just run this, select weather data, blah, 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 then click return and about 17 minutes later, or about any 17 minutes and a couple hours, you're gonna get that thing returned at the top here. Then copy and paste that into Libra, um, and then you've kind of got the concept and we'll be able to do that with anything uh, in the future. So good. Uh, the next thing I want you to do, so that's basically that, that's what I want you to do. I do under I want you to understand how to do it at least. Next, uh, put the collated data I give you into the database. So yeah, so you're actually going to take the collated data that I made, so the final data, the results. So if you don't understand what I mean by the collated data, I literally mean the results of the CSV that I, I've made for you. Right, so this thing, I need that into the database. And then what I want you to do on that, I would also like you to think about using average wind speed and how you can get that data out. I would like you to do this for one of the months. So, we go back to this again. So, I want you to do, I want you to adapt this to get the average wind speed back again and think about how you could then add this to a CSV file and which could be used. And it's only for one of the months. So I'm only asking you to do things for one of the months. It should only take a couple of hours maximum, the whole thing from start to finish. But I want you to try and get the average wind speed in there. So you're going to, when it comes to your main assignment, where there's much less data than the several hundred thousand things here, um, you should therefore be able to, to do this data, uh, to do this problem. Fair enough. 
So average wind speed. Um, so we're going to look for differences between average wind speed and differences between with the rest of these things. So weather data, team and min, max and this. And we're going to check and see if wind speed plays a bigger factor on it instead of just rain. And, you know, or, or it could be all three together. That's what your final assignment is going to have in it. So I need you to think about how you're going to adapt that to get the information back again. And what I'm not saying is that you have to fully implement this over 12 months. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to do that at all. Uh, I just want you to think about how to do it. It should take you about a minute to think about it and maybe just run once, okay? And see if you get the right results back. All right? Good.